Hey guys, and welcome to Vector Twist, a place where you can learn all about Adobe Illustrator. I'm Simona, and I'm here to show you that learning it is easier than you think. In this tutorial, I would like to show you how you can create your own custom hand lettering here in Adobe Illustrator. So we'll start with the sketch, and instead of using calligraphy pens, we'll just use a pencil. And then we're going to open up Adobe Illustrator, and there we're going to vectorize it. And I would like to show you two tools, the curvature tool and the width tool. So let's get right to it. Here's the final custom hand lettering that I've created. I chose the word recipes because I have all those recipes that are usually lying around written down on little papers. And I actually had the idea to put together a book of all the recipes that I love to cook. And I thought I'll make a really nice cover for it. So I really had the idea to create my custom hand lettering. So that's why I chose the word recipes. Of course, you can choose anything. I would like to show you how you can turn your little sketch into the script that you see here. And here, all I used is the curvature tool in the toolbar. And then I used the width tool. So let me show you how we can go about this. First, let me hide again the final here. And then I would like to show you the sketch that I've put into my sketchbook. Here you can see I created two horizontal lines and I started writing the word recipes. Then I decided which part of the letters would be thick and thin and then just created lines around it again. And of course I tried to do a freestyle scripting so it doesn't have to be absolutely accurate. Actually if it's a little bit off it might just look even better. Then I just simply took a photo, saved it and then placed it in Illustrator. So here let me show you the sketch. I've placed it on its own layer and I locked it. And then afterwards, I've created the letters. As you can see here, I created the letters and they are not connected. This is really important because I would like to show you the width tool here in the toolbar. And if everything is connected, it might get a little bit tricky. And in the end, it will look like this. So of course, these are just the steps to show you what we will be doing now. So let me hide everything. And then we're going to start all over again. So first, let's pick the curvature tool. The curvature tool is fun because if you're new to the pen tool and you get frustrated with it, you might just give it all up. And the curvature tool is actually sort of kind of like the introduction to the pen tool. It helps you create curves without having to fuss much with the handles and anchor points. So let me show you. The first thing here is we'll start with one point. And then we're going to go up into this curve here. And I just click once. But then when I go to the other side, you can see that my curve actually starts bending. So I press one more time again, and then I press approximately here in the middle. And then when I continue, and I'm not touching the artboard right now, I'm just hovering with the curvature tool. I can place another point here, and you can see I have the curve. So I'm just placing points, and then I just place more points, and the curve will just appear. So you don't actually have to drag any anchor points around. And then if I click down at the bottom of the R, you can see how it curves. And then we're going to let it end here next to the E. To end it, all I have to do is double click it. And then I press the command or the control key on the keyboard to deselect it. Now here you can see we've created the first letter. And I did not use the pen tool. I used the curvature tool. So next we want to create the E. Same thing, I'm going to place my first point, And then I'm clicking here in the middle. I'll make another point here. And as you can see, it curves it for me. Of course, if I don't like the curves, I can always alter them afterwards. But first, I would just like to create the letters one by one. Now we finished with the letter E, so let's go and create the C. So again, just like before, we'll place the first point. I'll place another one here. And when I go to place another point, you'll see that the curve is created for me. And then I'll let it end here. If at any point I want to change it, I can use the direct selection tool and I can actually drag the handles. You can see here if I don't like what I've created first, we don't have to go back and change everything and start from scratch. We can just use the handles and adjust it. Now I'm going to choose the curvature tool again to create the eye. So I'm pressing once, press down here, create a little curve, one more point, and then I let it end at the P. After that, we're going to create the P. And this is pretty simple. All I'm creating actually here is a straight line. Then the other part of the P, I'll need a curve. And as you can see, I'm actually not drawing along the lines of my sketch. I want to actually draw along the middle of my sketch. 
And the reason why I'm doing this will make really a lot of sense very soon when I'm going to choose the width tool to actually turn these simple lines into our custom hand lettering. Now we have just two more letters to do. So here we're going to create another E. Of course, you could copy the first one, but this one here looks a little bit different. So let me create this. And it's good practice actually too, to get a little bit of a better understanding of the curvature tool, which can be really, really helpful. And now I'm going to let it end approximately here. And then all I have left is actually just my S. So I'm going to create my S, make a little point up here, and I'm going to create the curve. Sometimes you can undo and place where you think you need to actually have a point so it curves perfectly. And then one more, and at the end here, I'm going to pull it up a little bit and let it end. And this is it. Now we've created the simple paths for our custom hand lettering. And the letters are not connected, so we can actually make a super good use of the width tool here. So first I'm going to select my first letter and then I'm going over to use the width tool. Shortcut for this is shift and W. And then as you can see here in the sketch, this part is thicker. So what I want to do here with the width tool is actually stretch out the path. So we don't actually have to go and trace along the sketch again. We can just use one simple path. And here, let me show you. So I'm going to choose this anchor point when I hover over and then I press, I get these handles on the side and then I just pull them apart. And now you can see right away, I've created my R. Now, if I wanted to, I could of course pick another point here and I could pull that further out or even push it a little closer together and change the top part here. You can place many more points with the width tool or you can use existing anchor points on the path. Now here at the end, we might actually want to grab that anchor point and pull it apart a little bit, not too much. And then maybe this part is a little bit too thick. So I'm going to just pull it inwards. Then we want to move on to the E. So same procedure here in my sketch, I can see I need this part of the E, the lower part thicker. So I'm just going to place the tool and then pull it apart until I like the thickness. And then if I think that this up here is way too thick, instead of pulling it outwards, I'm going to push it inwards, just like this. So next, the C, same thing. And since I can see I want it to be thin on top and thin on the bottom, I'm just going to grab a point here and you don't actually have to create an anchor point. When you hover over the path with the tool, you see the plus sign, and then you can just click and then pull it apart. Next, we're gonna go on to the eye, and same thing, maybe I want to have it thicker on top of here. And as you can see now, if I actually deselect things, we have a straight line across here. And of course, that doesn't look very good. What we actually can do is open up the stroke panel here, and here for the cap, we can choose round it. And now it was rounded off because we still have a path. We haven't created any outlines. We're still working with paths. So let me close this. We're going to move back to our width tool. And then we're going to grab the long part of the P here and do the same thing. We're going to stretch it out a little bit. Maybe we leave the top pointed. And then we're just going to change the bottom into a little bit of a thicker width. And then we're going to make sure that the cap is set to round it. Then we're going to alter the rest of the P, just like how we did with all the other letters. And really it's up to you how you want it to look. Then we're going on to the E, same thing. I want it thick here and then maybe a little bit thinner there. And at the end, I want a little bit thicker. And then we're going on to the last letter, the S. So here we want it a tad thicker. Same here, we'll stretch it out. And then inside here, we're going to pull it back. And at the end, we might want to actually open it up a little bit and here as well, because we want to connect both of those letters. Maybe we need to zoom in and see what's happening here and fix some stuff. And again, I'm just choosing the direct selection tool. And then when I see the handles, I will pull them apart. And as you can see, I'm getting now a top rounded part of our S. So here, if I zoom out, this looks much better. Again, if you have points or edges that you don't like, you can always use the direct selection tool, select the letter, and then rework the parts that you're not happy with. And this really goes into the tweaking. I just wanted to show you how you can easily create your own custom hand lettering. And remember also, you can choose the pen tool to actually remove points that are not needed. 
So for the S here, we might want to actually use the width tool again. And instead of having a thick part here, we want to pull it inwards a little bit. If you place points with the width tool that you're not happy with, all you have to do is actually double click it and then you get this pop-up, the width point edit window. Here you can actually set the size, side one and side two, which makes the total width, meaning on each side of the stroke, the width gets added. And if you don't like it, you can just select the delete button here and it's taken away. So again, let me show you. If I'd say I don't like this one here, I double click and then I just say delete. And then if I want my S to be a little thicker, I'll just pull it out more. And sometimes all you have to do is just with the direct selection tool, tweak things a little bit. And this is really almost all there is to it. All that's left is actually connecting the letters. So with the direct selection tool, I can pull them on top of the other letters. For example, here with the I, the E and the P work already well together. And then here for the S and the E, I just have to make sure they overlap. And of course, this is tweaking and I would zoom in and make it really correct. But I think you get the idea on how to create your own custom hand lettering here in Adobe Illustrator. Now, one last thing we need though, we need the little dot for our eye. And of course, let's make it really simple. Let's just use the ellipse tool and let's create an eye. And that's it. So here again, let me hide this and let me show you the final that I've already created for us and tweaked. Of course, you can create it over and over again, and each time it might look a little bit different, but this is really the gist of it. And it's not that complicated. And remember, the letters are still single, so actually, if you wanted to create your own custom font in the form of a custom hand lettering, you already have a few letters of the alphabet. Now here I would like to show you actually what I have created for my own recipe book cover. You can see here that all I've used is the hand lettering that we've just created here. And then I added some watercolor splashes, some lines, and then I printed it out and created my own custom book cover. And this is it. I really hope you enjoyed this small tutorial on how to start creating your own custom hand lettering in Vector here in Adobe Illustrator. So please go ahead and subscribe to the Vector Twist channel here. And please go also over to the website vectortwist.com. And thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.